some bear friends. Just hanging out. Hey, Mr. Bear, Mrs. Bear, I'm not sure. Hello. See ya. That was awesome. <laughs> ah, that was really cool. Hello friends, good morning. I've spent a couple days here in this cool little town, Gatlinburg. It's a nice view of it, isn't it? I wish I could show you everything there is about this town. There's so much here. I'll be back though, not to worry. Nearby is something that I've wanted to check out for a long time. It's in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Let's go. First stop is at the Sugarlands Visitor Center, right here in the very entrance of the park. I got some questions for them, and I'm also motivated by the fact that I put my National Parks Passport book through the washer, and I can't see any of the stamps anymore. They're all washed off. I think I've been to a couple of these locations. I know I haven't been to all of them, but I can't confirm it, so I've got to get a new National Parks Passport book. I can't believe I did that. Ugh. Oh well, here we are. Hey, thanks for the help, man. Wow, anytime. Cool. Well, before I even walked in, I got to get a lot of questions answered by this nice gentleman out front. So they probably wouldn't see any bears on the trail. I, I did want to you know, want to know what the shakedown is. Are they out and about? Is it hibernation time? I don't know. But he told me about that and some other things like where to park and how cool the trail was that we're about to see. I cannot wait to show you this. Just as you walk in the door is this giant topographical map. You can see right around there is Gatlinburg and we're gonna go right over here to Elkmont. Well, I'm sad that most of these are gone. You can still see some of the stamps. This page actually looks pretty good. But a lot of them are totally gone. So, Got to replace it. It's not just this passport book. They have a collector's edition. It's very much larger. And some other things that go along with the passport collection. They have this cool area of patches and walking stick pins. You can put that right on your walking stick. Looks like some pretty neat books here. History hikes, day hikes, all about the Smoky Mountains. I'm not much of a patch guy. I do like patches, but I don't have a place to really put them. But they have some really cool ones here. You can see, they're pretty neat. No gift shop in the area would be complete without a collection of bear paraphernalia. Oh, we have Smoky the bear here. That's cool. There's t-shirts and mugs, some jams and jellies, recipe books. From the hills. Pretty large gift shop. In the secondary part of the gift shop, more stuff, a lot of books. The National Audubon Society makes some of the best informational books on things of the world. Highly suggested. Lots of books in here. Interested in some of these mountain ghost story books. Cool. That'll be it. Thanks, man. Ooh. I just got some great information from another okay. ranger in there. Turns out you can drive all the way up to this trail. I thought you had to walk a lot further, but you don't. And he gave me some other little secrets about it. This is going to be awesome. I had to come back in. I was so excited to buy the new passport book, I forgot to get it stamped. Got the wrapper off. It comes with a map. National Park System map. Okay, cool. We'll look at that later. For now, let's find our page. Southeast region. Find a good blank area here. And Sugarlands stamp will be our first stamp. There's one more really cool stamp here. 
You just got to do it. to the campground. The campground's closed right now, but they said go up the road to the left. Welcome to Daisy Town, one of the original tourist destinations right here in the heart of the Smoky Mountains. It's no longer a tourist destination. Many years ago, Back, back in 1993, the last person moved out of this area. The National Park Service recognized that this part of the country was absolutely beautiful and should be preserved. They also decided that no private businesses could intermingle with their national park. So they kicked everybody out that lived here, gave them a time limit, shortened that up a couple times, and then finally vanished everyone, including this cool little town, Daisy Town. There was a place called the Appalachian Lodge that we'll see. Again, it's abandoned. The National Park Service does put some effort into preserving these homes because, well, they have to. Some time back, Daisy Town was added to the National Register of Historic Places. A lot of these homes are now preserved. They are deemed to be too bad they will raise them but many of them are still here and they're doing what they can to to keep them up for people like us to come check it out many of the homes are blocked off you sure want to go see inside but many are wide open for us to go check out Right out of the back porch, you can hear the water from the creek down below. I'm not the only one here. There's a few other people wandering around, but not hardly as many as there are on some of the other trails. As I was driving in, the parking lots were packed. And this is a really cool place to come because I don't think a lot of people recognize that it's here. Elkmont is a name you see around the places. In fact, I've seen a beer, something about Elkmont. A lot of people know the name, but it doesn't appear a lot have been out here. This is really neat. Number seven. That's it. One room. I would be totally fine with this cabin. I'd love to live in something like this. I love looking at this old hand-chipped wood and wondering, who made this? How, how long did it take you to do this? Just all the things about old places like this. I love the smell of this, the view out the windows. This would have been awesome. That's it. The base of this house is neat. Look at all those old timbers. Old sink. Looks like an old washer or something. It's an awfully new deck for an abandoned structure. As I said, they do preserve these properties. So it does make sense that they'd have a new deck out here. But this is something I think is awesome about the National Park Service and their preservation of these properties. Check this out. Right here by the doorway, behind plexiglass, is the heights 
of somebody's family over the years. That was pretty common to write the heights on the doorway, on the threshold there. I'm sure that a lot of you have had that at somebody's house in your family over time. We did. My grandparents in their kitchen. Remember they had a white painted door frame and all of the four of us grandkids wrote our heights as the years went on. I think there's probably a picture floating around about it. I'd like to see that. Some of these houses in Daisy Town look pretty old, like those two cabins we saw back there. But there's all a little bit of different design in these homes. They're all craftsman style home. Back in the days of Frank Lloyd Wright, there was a back to nature movement that was going on. And a lot of city dwellers came out here and wanted to build these naturistic use of the land type of homes, vacation homes and such. This was a tourist destination, so these were all uh, assumably rentals. Uh, I think some people lived here full time, but uh, this was part of the reason why Gatlinburg exists is because people who lived here invited others into their homes and that started the tourism industry. That's why Gatlinburg even exists today. But this was the original spot for where that was happening way back. Most of the houses look about the same, except this one. It's a two-story. I wonder if we can get upstairs. The answer is yes, we can get upstairs. We're kind of in it. That's what you get. This is neat that they preserved one section of the wall to show you how they preserved this. They used a plaster and lath and packed it in and painted the wood. That's what it used to look like. There are three doors to this bathroom. The rest of the door knobs have been removed and it is inaccessible for a good reason. Public restrooms are right there, so you don't need to use the houses anyway. Surprising, that's the only house that I saw a, a bathroom in or a toilet. You think if you're city people and you're going to come out here to vacation, put a toilet in, but I guess you know, outhouses were a thing biggest building here and the biggest draw for tourism was the Appalachian Clubhouse. It's a lot happened here over the years. Closed down and used by the National Park Service now. Looks like there's still some stuff going on here. Schedule a visit. This informational sign right here by the front doors of the Appalachian Club talks more about this in detail and in fact it does say that some of those older homes that were here since the 1930s were the local residents. And people had been visiting this area for so long, they loved it and then came here and built this clubhouse as a way to attract other hunters and fishers and people that just liked the forest. And then they built these other buildings back here. That's what it would have looked like right here, right on this porch. Notice the walkway around the underneath side of the building. Let's go see what this is about. Hmm. Okay. Maybe a stall for animals, storage of grain, who knows? Good sleeping place for bears. It's a little more exciting. Okay. It's like an old shop. Friends, thanks for joining me today on this cool adventure to one of the most unpopulated places in the most populated national park in the country. It's a cool little place, huh, Daisy Town? If you get a chance, make your way out here. It's not hard. You can even drive right through this street and all around. Just get out and check out the open houses. It's pretty cool. Or you can park right here in this parking lot like some other people have and enjoy the nice walk and a beautiful day like this. 
Friends, I'm glad you're here. I really am. If you like these videos, hit like. Let me know you're there. Leave a comment below and hit that notification button, that little bell button, and you won't miss out on any of these videos ever again. Thanks for watching, friends. I appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video.